the syllabus of your prelims or GS is Indian economy. And guys, in our optional paper 2 is entire Indian economy only. Hello everyone, a very good afternoon and welcome to Plutus IAS. Guys, today we are going to discuss all the frequently asked questions related to economics optional. I am going to tell you that why you should choose economics optional, how you should proceed with your journey of economics optional and what all will be the relevant sources to refer to while preparing for economics optional. So let's get started. Okay. So guys, the first question is that who should choose economics optional? Now see, there is a misnomer, there is a confusion prevalent and quite common confusion that only those students should opt for economics optional who have got a background of economics. That means they have done their graduation for economics or post graduation from economics. But guys, let me tell you, it is just a myth. It is not necessary that you have to have the background of economics to choose economics as your optional subject for UPSC. No. Anyone, anyone can opt for economics optional. Irrelevant of his background. That means doesn't matter whether you are from technical background, commerce background or from the background of humanities doesn't even matter whether you have studied economics in your 11th or 12th or not. It's irrelevant. You can start fresh. You can start from the scratch and prepare for this subject. That's the beauty of this subject. Here background is irrelevant and here in Plutus IAS when I'm going to guide you for economics optional, I am always going to start from the scratch, from the level of NCRT. So even if you are amateur in the subject, you are quite new to the subject, need not worry, you can easily opt for economics optional. Now the question is that why, why we should opt for economics optional, huh? Right. See, if we talk that why one should opt for economics optional, so the thing is that this subject has got so many benefits associated with it that we are going to discover as we proceed with our discussion that it becomes very important subject for you in your preparation for, for UPSC. Okay. So now let's explore another question that is economics easy? Right. So yes, economics is a very, very easy subject. Why? But sir, people say economics is very tough. See, economics is basically a technical subject. And the benefit of technical subject is that if you know the concept, right? If you know the concept, you can frame the answers on your own. No need to cram up those huge books. No need to cram up the dates, the figures, the definitions. No. No such thing is required. Just the concept clarity, just the awareness with the topic and you can write 250 words in your own language. That's the ease. Okay. Or that's the benefit of economics. Plus, you can always support your answer with the curves or the graphs which make it more easy to understand and which compels the examiner to give you good marks. See, in economics optional, you may basically have to pay attention towards the keywords. Right? That what are the keywords? If you are writing those keywords and these keywords are actually the conceptual words which you have to use in your answers and you are awarded marks for these keywords only. Right? So it becomes relatively very easy to produce a very good answer in economics optional in comparison to other subjects. So anyone can choose the subject, right? And you just have to have conceptual clarity. And I make sure of it that each and every concept 
that I explain in the class, each and every student grasps that concept. He or she understands it fully and he and she can write the answers on that topic in a relevant way. That is my focus when I teach in the class. Getting my point? Okay. Moving on to the next question that what are the outlines of the paper? Before answering that question, I just want to <clears throat> answer one more question that what are the benefits? If I take economics optional, so what are the benefits that I can reap from this subject? So first of all, if you observe the trend of prelims, you pick up past 10 15 years paper or 20 years paper what you will observe that the inclination of upsc towards economics is increasing year after year that means in prelims more and more questions are asked from the economic section every year and it ranges from 16 to 22 questions in your prelims right The syllabus of your prelims or GS is Indian economy and guys in our optional paper 2 is entire Indian economy only right plus questions are also from the finance sector in prelims guys we have a subject that is banking and public finance banking and finance where we study about finance in much detailed form right so this is going to provide you an extra edge to crack the, the questions that are asked in your prelims. You will have an upper hand in comparison to other aspirants who haven't studied the subject in that much detail that you are going to study when you take economics as your optional subject. Okay. Apart from this, your GS paper 3, it is entirely Indian economy. The paper 2 of your optional. Your GS paper 3 is fully based on it. If I talk about GS paper 3, so in GS paper 3, they mainly focus on agriculture, industries, getting my point? And then policies. And all this fall under the syllabus of G economics optional paper 2. So, when you are going to study economics optional, you will study the readings, you will study certain articles by various renowned economists. So obviously, you will have better concept of these topics and you can produce your answer in a very well way in GS paper 3 just by opting for economics optional. Getting my point? Okay, so your entire GS paper 3 is going to be based on your paper 2 of economics optional okay now next thing is and that's very interesting point see guys relatively in comparison to other subjects your economics is a very new subject it is new and since it is new it has got certain benefits associated with it there are limited theories right limited theories are there limited economists are there and limited readings are there so the study material the reference book everything is limited it is concised you don't have to explore a lot many of books and lot many of articles or papers the subject itself is very new it is yet to be explored so UPSC gets constrained in this way UPSC cannot ask some random question in economics optional right because the subject is constrained and in UPSC syllabus of economics optional we do not have econometrics that means the statistical portion the mathematic portion of economics is not there in the syllabus of UPSC so when you obsolete the maths portion, when you remove the maths portion, the leftover portion autonomously becomes very easy. Yeah. Plus, UPSC cannot ask very advanced level question in economics optional. Why? Because if they ask advanced level question, they have to incorporate mathematical tools. And mathematical tools are not there in your syllabus. 
so that makes the scope and variety of questions to be very limited the range of questions that they can ask is very constrained that is why most of the questions 40 to 45 percent of the questions in economics optional are repetitive in nature questions asked in your past years will be repeated again and again in your economics optional paper getting my point so the scope is very limited it is narrow you can easily complete it you can easily revise it several times okay and it provides you an upper hand in your gs it provides you benefit in your prelims just by choosing economics optional you are actually making your performance better in gs paper 3 you are improving your performance in prelims and thereby you actually are paving your way for success in upsc that's the benefit of choosing economics optional okay now let's move on another question that is frequently asked that please outline paper one and paper two so see if i talk about paper one so your paper one first of all is technical in nature when i say technical so need not be scared of it hmm? students from humanity background or commerce please do not be scared of it technical here means it is not that analysis technical means conceptual and as i told you the subject is new so limited laws are there limited concepts are there yes or no hmm? so questions on those concepts direct questions technical means direct questions direct conceptual questions will be asked number one getting my point on the same topics repetitive questions on the same topics will be asked no new law will be referred here no application will be there direct topic based questions so what all we have here first is your microeconomics okay second portion of paper one is macroeconomics third is money banking and public finance fine fourth is international economics and fifth is growth and development this is your paper one and if you pay attention your money and banking is common in your prelims and gs international economics balance of payment is again common hmm? all these topics comprise of your paper one okay now if i talk about paper two so paper two is basically your indian economy hmm? to cut the long story short it is actually the history and till date Indian economy so you have to study and explore Indian economy to the detail and that's what your GS is so this paper 2 is going to help in your GS paper 3 as well so that's the brief outline of your economics optional paper 1 and paper 2 what are the book list now see guys if we talk about book list so yeah certain famous and most used books are there in the market but see the problem there is that in those books those books are very elaborate you can read book of 1100 1500 2000 pages but tell me what's the point of it because until and unless you revise what you have read at least five times before exams you would forget many things yeah you'll tend to forget after reading as well you can't remember all these things because you have to write your gs papers as well yes or no so here the role of plutus ias comes in i have written the books related to all the topics of paper one and paper two hmm. and these books have been taken these books that i have written they have got all the concepts covered in your reference book so a short crisp and precise manner 
to read all these references book is to read the notes of Plutus IAS, the books of Plutus IAS. Now that being said, I will provide you with the book list for Micro HL Ahuja, for Macro Again, your HL Ahuja for macro is there. Hmm? Plus, Froen. See, this book Froen is a good book. It is going to clear all your basics related to macroeconomics. Okay? Then, for money, banking and finance. Again, HL Ahuja is a good book for it. And for your public finance, HL Bhatia. Fine. For international economics, Salvador, it's actually the Bible of international economics. If you will read this book, your lot of concepts will become clear. Your base will absolutely be clear. But again, the book is very thick. In my notes of Plutus IAS, in my book, you will get the fringements of Salvador plus the detailed analysis as well in precise form. Okay. So, see, and if you talk about growth and development, so there is no particular book for growth and development. You have to explore the topics written in your syllabus from net from various books from various sources there is no specific book for growth and development okay no specific book you have to locate various sources okay you have to explore various sources but again we have got a book of growth and development that will help you a lot okay so this is for paper one paper two See the compulsion for paper 2 is economic survey number 1. It is very important for your Indian economy. Then your budget speech, budget of the year. Fine. After that, Niti Ayog, the paper published by Niti Ayog is very relevant for your paper 2. Apart from this, there are several readings and it is being taught in the syllabus of graduation okay in delhi university it is there there are several economists you have to read the research paper their readings it is very important part it will give you a great insight about the topics that are, that is being discussed so and apart from that there is no specific book for indian economy hmm? i have incorporated all these aspects in my book of Plutus IES, if you refer to that book, that will be very much helpful to you in your preparation of paper 2. Okay. So, then the book of Plutus IES. Very relevant it is. Getting my point? So, this is your book list for paper 1 and paper 2. Okay. Next question that is asked that how much time is required for preparation? Now see guys, this is a very subjective question. It depends from individual to individual. But if you talk of me, so I here in Plutus IS, I take 5 to 6 months at max because I do not rush with the syllabus. I cover each and every topic in proper time depending on its gravity. Okay, Depending on how important or relevant the topic is, I impart time to it. So here we do not rush with the syllabus. I am going to complete your syllabus, entire syllabus of economics optional, which will be helpful or which will cover more than 90% of your GS paper 3 and more than 95% of your prelims. I will cover it in 5 to 6 months. So economics optional plus GS paper 3 plus your prelims, everything will be covered in 5 to 6 months. Okay guys. And if you talk about the aspirant that on the basis of personal preparation, what that an aspirant should do. See, 
so my advice is most of the aspirants what they believe is that they should prepare the subject after the prelims but my advice is no that's not the way to prepare because the subject is deep and subject has got implications on other papers of gs as well that is gs paper 3 and your essay also because every year one essay is asked from economic section yeah you can skip it you have got other options also you have to write just two essays but one essay is from economic topics hmm? and that essay will reward you more marks because it is going to be technical in nature conceptual essay it is yes or no so now the thing is everything will be covered by me in five to six months and you people should complete your subject before prelims do not postpone your preparation of optional for after prelims things no complete it before prelims because after prelims you do not have much time to prepare the subject you won't get five or six months so try to complete it before prelims getting my point okay next question is that what about answer writing and test series so see guys if you talk about test series so i'm talking about the present scenario and the scenario hasn't changed a lot from past no relevant test series is available in the market you can explore explore and explore but very few very limited and not two of the standard quality that's the availability of test series in the market but we here as at plutus is we provide you a full fledged test series both online and offline mode and i personally check your paper the test series is being prepared by me i give the feedback to each and every student not to the bulk but i will establish the conversation with you the feedback will be imparted to you and the test series will going is going to be very beneficial to you if you join our test series okay answer writing see here in plutus ias every week there is a weekly test of economics optional every saturday to be precise and the paper is being prepared by me i correct it and one to one interaction and feedback is given to the student okay thereby improvising your an answer writing skills because see in mains you are going to write the answer the examiner is going to deduce your level of information your wisdom and understanding by your answers only so the trick is that how to present the answers in a way that impresses the invigilator and the examiner so that's why what i teach you here a separate session is going to be held every week for answer writing and test will also be conducted that will frame you to write the answer in a proper way so that's it guys these were the faqs related to economics optional i hope the video was helpful to you thank you